Come on, everybody, clap your hands right here. We're going to have a little old school church right here. Is that all right? Somebody make some noise. I got a little help. Trisha Green, won't you tell them how you feel about it? Say it. Come on, give God the praise. Come on and give God the praise. Everybody give God the praise. Trish, tell them one more time how you feel about it.
Good Morning St. Luke. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come into the house of the Lord to give him the fruit of our lips. Come on, begin to clap your hands with us, wave your hands, sing with us. We're going to praise the Lord on today. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Oh, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house.
Well, amen. My name is Cliff Matthews, and I am the pastor of the St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church, and I want to say welcome to our worship service today. If you are a first-time worshiper with us, welcome. And we want to ask that you would now share your presence by typing in the comment section on Facebook Live, first-time worshiper or first-time visitor. If you are a returning member of the St. Luke tribe, Welcome back. And I want to say in advance, thanks for all that you do week after week to help make this service possible. Well, you know how we do it here at St. Luke. We want to invite you to now share this link on your Facebook page and invite someone to come to church with us. We also want to encourage you to use either uh, the comment section for your amens or an emoji to register your response to something which is said or done throughout the service. And also to place at the right time your prayer requests that we can lift those up to God in prayer. Well, today is the sixth Sunday of the Easter season, and we are continuing our preaching series around the title, Ensure and Certain Hope, looking at how the resurrection can change our lives, not just one Sunday a year, but each and every day. And also we want to say to all of you out there, happy Mother's Day. Today, beloved, we want to give a special shout out to our worship ministry, to our production team. Thanks to them, we're able to come here week after week with this service that you can have at your disposal. Well, beloved, let's begin our worship service today with our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Just bless the Lord, and I just want you to help us sing that this is my story, this is my song, that I am blessed, and I am assured that I have a blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just declare, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Say, oh, what a foretaste. Glory divine, I'm an heir of salvation, and I've been purchased of God, and I'm born of His Spirit, and I've been washed in His blood. Now come on, let's just declare, this is my story, this is my song, and I'm praising my Savior. Praising my, Praising my Savior all the day long. The day long. Come on, just say perfect submission, perfect submission. and it's perfect delight. Perfect delight. Visions, of rapture. Visions of rapture now burst now at my sight. From above, From above. echoes of mercy, echoes yeah. of mercy. And whispers, of whispers of love. Oh, this is my story, this yeah. Is story. This, is this is my song, and I'm praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. Oh, Savior. 
At this time, I want to invite you where you are to join in with us as we together go before a holy and just God and confess our sin against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. This we ask in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, rest in the promise of Scripture. If we confess our sin, our God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You brought me through this And you brought me through that Lord, I'm grateful To you You brought me through this And you brought me through that Lord, I'm grateful Lord, to you, can you help me sing? You me through. And you brought me through that. You brought me through that. I'm so grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. To you. Can we sing it again? You brought me. You brought me
Yes, Lord, you brought me. You brought me through that. Lord, oh, 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 I'm so grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Welcome back to the St. Luke News Network. I'm MJ3. These are your notices and announcements for the month of May 2021. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We invite you back for Virtual Bible Study on Tuesday, right here on Facebook Live. Virtual Bible Study is the time to study God's Word with our senior pastor, Reverend Clifford Matthews Jr. So again, come back 12 noon on Tuesdays, right here on Facebook Live for Virtual Bible Study. We'll see you there. It's that time in our service where we celebrate birthdays, special events, and special occasions. Take a moment right now, write or type in our comment section and tell us if you're celebrating a birthday or a special anniversary or a special event. Happy birthday, happy special occasion from your friends and members of St. Luke. We also want to say welcome to our visitors and welcome back to our returning members. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. Take a moment right now, type in the comment section and tell us where you are visiting from so we can show you some St. Luke love. Every Sunday, Pastor says, be an evangelist. And being an evangelist virtually is really easy. All you have to do is hit that share button. Now that share button should be somewhere over there. You should see a small button that says share. All you have to do is hit that button. It will take you to your profile page. You can write a brief message like come watch, come worship with me or come watch our service and then click back into the video and join us. There will be a badge next to every person that has shared the video. So we'll know if you're sharing. So be an evangelist and share this service with your friends and family on Facebook. After service ends, we still want to stay connected to you. So friends, all you have to do is look for members of St. Luke right here on Facebook and join our Facebook group. We love chatting with you all. We love seeing your pictures, your photos. We also want you to share your prayer requests, share your testimonies, encourage each other throughout the week. Virtual worship doesn't stop on Sunday. It's a week long event and members of St. Luke. We'll see you there. That concludes this edition of the St. Luke News Network. Before I go, let me remind you to like us right here on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash St. Luke CLT. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the St. Luke News Network. 
We'll see you next week. Well, I want to say thanks again for joining us for worship today. And don't forget, you still have time, beloved, to share this link on your Facebook page and invite someone to come to church with us. I hope that already something which has been said or done has strengthened you for your journey. And you feel better. Your load is lighter already. Amen. Well, today, I want to say thanks to all of you for your continued support as we press towards our goal of funding the project of replacing the stationary cameras located in our sanctuary. Our goal is to replace these cameras so that when we come back into worship in the sanctuary, in-person worship, we can still maintain a level of quality in our digital broadcast. Beloved, I am quite clear, I want to say it again for the umpteenth time. There will never be a time when St. Luke does not have a digital presence that is quality, that can send the message of the gospel and the unique brand of St. Luke around the world. We will not have in-person worship at the expense of digital online worship. We are going to make sure that we are maximizing our presence in a digital reality. Thank you so much for helping us do that. Where do we stand today? I'm glad you asked. Today we are at Get This Now. Our goal was $38,000. We are at 70%. So we are still pressing our way. We're going to take this out a few more weeks and give you time to, uh, to really support this. This is important, and we want you to give your full support to this endeavor. It only takes a few folk to make the contribution. It only takes a few folk to really get behind it. Together, we can. Now, I want to say this, and this is important. I made a mistake. <laughs> Church anniversary. It's not the third Sunday, but the fourth Sunday. It'll be held this year because there are five Sundays. It'll be held this year on the 23rd. So we have an extra week to get ready for church anniversary. St. Luke celebrating its 71st year in existence. 71 years of continuous, effective ministry in this community and around this world. Having said that, I want you to know that you should be preparing yourself now to see those video clips and reminders of what God has brought us from. And we hope that you will share those and join in with us as we together press towards year 72. Now, there's a question many of you are asking. I know that you are. Pastor, when are we going to come back into in-person worship? I'm glad you asked. If you are present with us online, church anniversary, May 23rd, you will hear a special announcement from us concerning when we're going to open the doors for in-person worship. Right now, Mr. Jarvis Miller, our church administrator, whose responsibility it is to not only govern or, 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 or look over the building and grounds, but to also make sure that we do it safely. Mr. Miller is working with our insurance provider. He's working with um, uh, persons who can help us in our region, the American Baptist region. He's working with them to get the best way to open the church and to make sure everybody stays safe. So it's coming sooner than later. It's just around the corner. But please be aware, I'm trying to be, get you ready for it, that when you come back, it will be different. <laughs> You'll see things change somewhat because we can't go back to where we were. So, beloved, thank you for that. God loves you and so do I. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, I am so blessed that we are able to come to you today 
and thankful for your continued support. Well, beloved, let's get ready now for church and prayer. I want to encourage you now, beloved, to type your prayer request on Facebook Live now in the comment section. We'll take those prayer concerns and lift them up to God in prayer, believing that God is able to hear and answer our prayer. After the choir, or after, I'm sorry, not choir, after the worship ministry brings us its election, I'll come back and lead us to God's throne of grace.
Let us pray. Dear God, in whom we live and move and have our being, how thankful we are for this day. Dear God, we are thankful for the opportunity we have to come before your presence one more time. Not only to ask, but also to just worship you. Dear God, we declare now that you are worthy of our praise. The words of that song, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name, your character is worthy to be praised. Dear God, we praise you today with our lips, with our hearts, with our minds, with all that we have. We honor you today. And dear God, we come also to thank you for all that you've done in spite of us each and every day. Huh. For waking us up this morning. Thank you <laughs> for starting us on our way. Thank you for clothing us in our right mind. Thank you for being a hedge of protection. Thank you for being what we need when we need it most. Thank you for open doors, for battles won, for peace within, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Dear God, thank you for your son Christ, the resurrected one. Thank you for the hope we have because he lives. Thank you. Now, dear God, you see the prayer request. We lift up to you even today, our sister Brenda Weathers. We ask that you continue to touch and heal in the name of Jesus. We lift up today, even now, God, we call by name Brother McIntyre. Be with him as he recovers. Bless his family. Let them know your presence and your power. Dear God, we lift up others whose names have been listed. God, have mercy. We pray now for their complete deliverance in the name of Jesus. And now, dear God, we ask your blessing upon this country, this world. Thank you for the healing that's occurring, for the return to some sense of safety in the midst of this pandemic. Dear God, bless this country. Bless our leaders. Dear God, give them courage to stand for justice, even when it costs them something. Now, God, continue to shine your light on St. Luke. Let her be the church you've called her to be, that those whom you put her in contact with may know there is a God who's worthy to be praised. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Praise your mercy towards me. Ooh. Your love and kindness towards me. Your tender mercies I see. Day after day.
That's why we say, great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, God. Thank you. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness.
Beloved, at this time, I want to invite your attention, please, to the gospel according to Matthew, the 27th chapter, starting in the 57th verse. We are continuing our preaching series for the Easter season in sure and certain hope. We're looking at how the resurrection ought to impact our lives, not just one Sunday a year but each and every day, in fact, each and every hour. Today, our installment in that series comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 27th chapter, starting in the 57th verse. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. 
the next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to, the, went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then quickly go and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. Today, beloved, I want to preach for a few moments today from the subject, God works in the after. God works in the after. Let us pray. Father, where I am, you brought me. What I know, you taught me. What I have, you gave me. And what I am, Lord, you made me. Lord, I am depending on you. Can't do nothing till you come. This is your servant's prayer. I ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. I would you just tell somebody, wherever you are, neighbor, huh, God works in the after. As I prepared for this sermon, as I began to meditate and reflect, I began to notice in the reading of Scripture a word that appeared over and over again. You know the word. I emphasized it in the reading. The word is after. It hit me as I read, meditating on what God will have me say today. That word is often read over so quickly that we fail to really understand the power of that word. Small as it is, I want to say to you, beloved, in this Easter season, that word is a word that should give us hope in the midst of our difficulty. The text that I've read to you today is coming to us after that Friday where they hung him high and stretched him wide. About three o'clock in the afternoon, he yelled out, it is finished, Christ Jesus did, lost his life, hanging on a cross in naked shame before all those who could see him. 
It wasn't death. It was an execution. He died as a criminal would die, facing capital punishment for crimes against the state. The text tells us after several hours of him just hanging there, they take him off the cross. One gospel version has there being a conversation about whether to break his legs. But when they came to break his legs, because he was already dead, no need to break his legs, an act that was often done in case the crucified criminal somehow managed to hang on to life and would dare try to get up and escape punishment. The text for the sermon today begins with Joseph of Arimathea, a brother who had means, status, and position, going before Pilate, the one who washed his hands and thought that by doing so he could escape history's judgment. Ah, but Pilate is always remembered as the one who could have stood tall, but instead cowered it in the corner. Joseph of Arimathea comes to him and says, give me the body, which is tradition. The family of those who die this way come and claim the body of their loved ones because even though they died as a criminal, because they were human, they were entitled dignity after death. Nobody came for him. Joseph went to Pilate and said, give me his body. Pilate said, all right. And Joseph of Arimathea took the body wrapped it in linen cloth, placed it in his own tomb. Yeah, Joseph had pre-burial insurance. He already covered his end while his life was still in him. He laid him there and put a stone over the tomb. The Bible tells us that the day after Preparation. After again, some of the leaders came before Pilate, not like Joseph did, to do something that, was, that showed some dignity. They came to make sure that what they thought was a big lie may never have a chance to get off the ground. They said, while he lived, he talked about getting up from the dead after three days. So Pilate, let's put an end to all this stuff because if we don't end this, end this now, the lie will be worse than what we experienced in his living. Pilate said, all right, you have a guard, you have a soldier, soldiers to guard the tomb. Be gone now. Pilate dismissed them, and that was that. Beloved, look at the text. After appears so many times, and I know all of us who are Christian have heard the story of the resurrection before. Yes, we have. We heard about this, and we're not first-time hearers. But imagine if you were to hear this story for the first time, that you never heard about Jesus Never heard about anything about his life or his death. 
Imagine if someone were to read this story for the first time. After he gave up his life, after he was dead, the reader will have no expectation of anything happening more. Jesus would have been not so much an actor, but somebody who was, but now was not. Someone who used to live, but death got him like death gets all of us. You would have expected if you were to hear this story for the first time ever, you would expect that death would be the great finale to his life like it is to be for others. That death was the end of the story. That's how we will read it. But not in this story. In this story, a whole lot of activity occurs after. And even if you read this story and you understood the activity after his death, that activity would not set you up for what happens in chapter 28. It would be no more than loved ones doing the work that we do when someone we love die. We work after they're gone to make sure their final remembrance is one of dignity and respect. And you would expect those who didn't like somebody to do what they do after the person is dead. But I bet if you were to read this story for the first time, never having heard it before, what well, would not cross your mind would be the earth-shaking declaration that occurs in chapter 28. Notice what occurs in chapter 28. Begins with the word after. Yeah, yeah. After huh, the Sabbath was over. Preach, boy. After he gave up his life. After Joseph got his body. Huh? After he laid him in his own tomb. Yeah. After his haters went to get a God. After all of that. After that. The women show up on the first day of the week at the tomb. But instead of finding huh, the tomb sealed and finding the finality of life was still of death was still going on. No. They instead find to their shock the earth shook. Uh, the soldiers stood stupefied. <laughs> and the angel declared to them, you're looking for Jesus. He's not here. He has been raised just as he said. And the angel declares, this is the message I have for you. I want to say, beloved, this is the message I have for you today as well. There is something about the resurrection that changes how we understand what is the end of a journey. So many of us, beloved, face so much in life. We go through so much on a daily basis. We are confronted by our own humanity. 
confronted by the evil in our world for which we have no remedy. We are confronted by the fact that bad things happen to good people every single day. And too often, beloved, when we come to something, there is a sense that it is what it is, it's over, it's done. But what the text tells us, the message that the angel declared to them, this is the message for you, is that, beloved, when life drops you off at a place where you have not intended to be, when life drops you off in a context that is not what you ever could have expected to come your way, I've come to tell you that God works in the after of our lives. Preach, boy. God works when there is a sense that is over and it cannot be changed. God works after the breakup. God works after the diagnosis. God works after the financial loss. God works after unemployment. God works after you've gone through. God works after the child has died. God works after the marriage has ended. God works in the after of our lives. Now, some of y'all missed that, but right now I can't see it. But somebody ought to be saying hallelujah to that because you need to know no matter what comes your way, because God raised Jesus from the dead, there's always an after to the stuff we go through. Beloved, when life tries to put a period and close your book, God turns the closure of the book until the end of a chapter. Because when the world thinks it's all over, God gets in it and God turns it around and God works in the after of our lives. Some of y'all right now ought to take a trip down memory lane and remind yourself how when life did what it did to you, that God worked after it happened. Some of y'all right now ought to be able to testify and to praise God that after you went through your struggle, God showed up in the after and turned things around. That's what God did. Now, beloved, there's only one question that some of y'all really probably are asking already. Well, pastor, if God works in the after, couldn't God work in the before? If God is so good at working in the after, couldn't God work before the after occurred? Huh. If God is so good about working after the diagnosis, couldn't God have worked to prevent a diagnosis? Yeah, beloved, and be honest with you, that is a good question, <laughs> and that's perhaps a good question for another sermon. But let me just say, I've been thinking about that all week, about how God works in the after. Why doesn't God work in the before? Well, I want to give you a few suggestions. Perhaps God works in the after, huh. because in the after, we find ourselves depending more on God. Preach, boy. Yeah, before, when you had the money, before, when you felt invincible, before, when you needed nobody for anything, before, when you thought your degree was all you needed, before, when you were too good to look down 
and help somebody before when you had the world at your hands, before when you had all the money anybody needed, you didn't need God like that. But when life showed up and when life dropped you off and life shook you like you were a piece of clothing in a dryer, when life turned your world upside down and all that you thought would help you cannot help you now, that's when you realize that you need God now more than ever. I know I'm preaching truth today. You ain't got to say amen because the reality of it is there's so many of us that did not really understand the goodness of God until life put us in the after. When God showed up then, we are able to see. Before God allowed us to go to the after, we thought we had it all together. But now we find ourselves in the after. And all we can do is lean and depend on God. I wish I had a witness out there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody lived that before? Anybody felt like nothing could touch you? But when life turned your world upside down, that's when you really understood, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Yeah. Why did God not work in our before? Why does God work in the after? Well, one reason could be because, beloved, we were so sure of our own self-sufficiency that God had to allow us to go to the after for us to appreciate that all of our help comes from the Lord. Well, beloved, why does God allow the after? Why doesn't God work in the before? I'll tell you why. Because when God works in the after, help me now, that's when we understand the vastness, the depths of God's grace. My God, my God. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about right now. Beloved, I'm going to get in trouble now, but I'm going to say it. One of the things that helps us understand the grace of God is going through a period where folk don't even want to talk to you. Uh, I'm in trouble now. There are folk who won't deal with you when you come into a season where things are difficult. I was talking to somebody a few weeks ago, somebody who found themselves in a bad situation. They reached out to family, reached out to so-called friends, and they told me in my clinical role, they told me, they said, I've called them, they won't answer. I tried to connect to them, they won't respond. The person said, for them, just the accusation that I've done something wrong, get this now, makes them run away from me. And so they won't even help me because they feel if they help me, they become dirtied by their association. I listened and I understood the brother was telling the truth that sometimes even when it's just an accusation, folk will let you off and drop you off and refuse to connect just because somebody says something and they don't want to get Dirty. Beloved, 
after huh, they drop you off. Yeah, after huh, they cut you off, God shows up to show us how big is God's grace. God works in the after to let you know that where sin doth abound, grace does much more abound. God shows up to let you know that by grace you are what you are. God shows up to let you have a new song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. That when you face your after, that's when you understand that no matter what the world may do, there is a God whose grace is bigger than your yesterday. There is a God who loves you no matter what the world may think. That there is a God whose grace is still sufficient that there is a God whose love is still unchangeable that grace still works no matter where you are but grace shows up best in the after of life y'all excuse me I got happy there I got happy there because as I was preaching I had a same time a trip down memory lane and I realized for myself that grace showed up in my own after. Yeah. Why does God not work in the before? Why does God save the best work for the after? Well, one, because that's when we are humble enough and, and able to understand we need God. That's when God's grace becomes most evident. But lastly, beloved, I got to go now. Lastly, I want to tell you that God does his best work in the after. Because God, in the after, gets all the glory. And I want to tell you, beloved, that is all right with me. That if God chooses to let me show up, to let me come into the after, that I know that God is going to use the after to get the glory out of it. I heard somebody say that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, who are called according to God's purpose. Beloved, I believe that when we come into the after, that God is able to make us a real testimony, not one of those fake cookie cutter testimonies but to make us sit up and stand up and for the world to recognize if it had not been for God on their side they would not be where they are today beloved I want to tell you that God does his best work because when God does it in the after God gets all the glory and beloved I want to tell you when folk have put death on you, when folk have written your obituary, when folk have decided that your life is over, when folk have decided you no longer matter, when folk have kicked you to the curb, when folk say they're done with you, beloved, watch them look funny when they cut you off and kick you out. But God shows up and stands you up and shows you off. God gets the glory out of us when God allows us to come to an after. How do I know that? Because when God allowed his son to die on a Friday, and when God allowed his son to stay in the tomb Friday night and all day Saturday, but when God showed up early Sunday morning, and spoke life into a dead place. God got all the glory as his son who they crucified a few days earlier got up from the dead and showed himself real. 
Beloved, somebody today, you're in an after situation. But beloved, I want to tell you that in the after, God is getting the glory. Hang on in there just a little while longer. God is doing something in your after. And the same God who was with you before will be the same God with you now in your after. You may not have the same friends, but you will have the same God. Beloved, my time is up, but I thank you for yours. I thank God that God does his best work in the after. I wish I had some witnesses out there that didn't mind giving God glory right now. That God does God's best work in the after. Praise him. Bless him. Give God the glory. God does his best work in the after of our lives. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for showing us that the resurrection gives us certainty. That there is something beyond the final chapter that the world writes for us. There is more. And when we find ourselves in the after, you're working even then. Thank you for the after, for the humbling that it does, for the power of grace it reveals, and for the glory to you that is given. Dear God, somebody is facing and dealing with living in now the after of something. Let them know because he lives, because of the resurrection, the after is where you will do your best work. This is our prayer we ask in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. Well, beloved, I want to say thank y'all today for allowing us to come to you where you are. And I want to encourage you now, beloved, to be faithful to the giving of the tithe and the offering. We need your support to go from 70 to 100%, hopefully, this week to get the $38,000 raised for our camera system. We're counting on you. We need you to help us. And if God has placed it upon your heart, I want you to pray that God will find a way to help you get the means to do what you feel God has called you to do. I'm serious about that. If you don't have it, but you say, God, if I had it, I'll give it, tell God that. And watch God allow you to get it. And then you'll face the test to give what God gave you. Beloved, we need your support. We can't do what we do without you. But I say thank you for what you do week after week. And those who have been watching and those who have been viewing us and have never given anything to support our ministry, today is the day. After watching this service for so many months, after enjoying the brand of church known as St. Luke, why don't you be faithful today and give the offering that God lays upon your heart? You see how to do it. We have our PayPal, our Cash App. You can also call now that number, Mr. Jarvis Miller, our MBA-level church administrator, who will allow you to do a transaction via phone that is safe and secure using your debit or credit card. You may also mail that in to St. Luke Baptist Church. You see the address there. Or if you want, you may drive by, place it in the mailbox attached to the building, and Mr. Miller will get that and receive it and send that to you. Well, beloved, you have a great day today. Oh, yes. So... Here's the deal. Bible study has been done, but we're having technical issues around the software for that. And so, beloved, we need to get this new camera system in. It's not just cameras. It's also software that will help us bring the services we want to bring to you. It's not a gimmick. It's not a game. We're having real technical issues, and we need to work those out. And it'll be worked out best. <laughs> when we have our new camera system. So, beloved, help us do that. We're trying to get it up and running. I promise to catch us up where we are in Bible study, but we need your help to get this done. Well, God loves you. So do I. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a great day. And remember, 
God does God's best work in the after. God loves you, and so do I. I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. Claiming something different. Expecting something.